Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Report for Friday, January 17th. Today is the start of the weekend for many of you, and if it is, welcome to the weekend. And if it's not, better luck next time. Um, something that happened this morning as, you know, dropping off kids at school is I went to Starbucks. And the line at Starbucks was absolutely packed. Like, it's like the weekend and everybody's splurging just a little bit extra. And that extra splurge comes with, in most cases, a five or six dollar coffee. And if, if you get the binties, like you can you can get up to an eight or nine dollar coffee. And what I want to talk about today is what I call the Starbucks effect. Now, when I was a wee little lad, I would go to church on Sunday mornings. And I want to say like you could throw a quarter, maybe 50 cents, pour yourself a cup of coffee and you were good to go. And in fact, I don't remember specifically because I wasn't a huge coffee drinker as a kid, but I feel like you could go to IHOP or any of these breakfast locations. You would order your breakfast, your bacon, your eggs, pancakes, of course, and a cup of coffee. And it was, you know, it was the craft of coffee. But I want to say like, it was a dollar, 99 cents, or it, it was significantly lower than it is today. Now, if you go into the same places, like just coffee, not even anything special, just a plain black coffee with maybe some creamer, maybe some sugar is $2.50, $3 in a lot of cases. And that's what I call the Starbucks effect. Because you see what happened was Starbucks popped up and they found that you could get away with charging $5, $6 for a coffee, and people will pay for it. Now, now I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, yeah, but those are the specialty drinks. If you go to Starbucks and just get a tall drip or something, you're only paying like $2. But that's still a far cry from the 50 cents to the 99 cents that you used to get for a crappy cup of coffee. Now, sure, maybe the Starbucks brew is a little bit better than the crappy cup of coffee that you would get at a gas station for 25 or 50 cents, but how much better? The other thing that Starbucks has done is they've made coffee drinking a part of pretty much every age group. Remember before when I said, you know, I was, I was younger, I didn't really drink coffee growing up, and I kind of remember the first couple of sips, I was like, oh, no, gross, that's nasty. How were my parents and grandparents drinking this stuff? Well, Starbucks figured out a way that if you load it up with enough sugar and enough different flavorings that you can get kids hooked on coffee at a much, much younger age. And if you're a teenager and paying five, six dollars for a cup of coffee is an acceptable practice, then when you go out to a restaurant, you're not even going to flinch at paying two fifty dollars for a cup of coffee. And that is what I call the Starbucks effect. And what I think that should happen is, I think every restaurant across the country, like even McDonald's is charging $3 for cups of coffee. I think they should all pay Starbucks 50 cents per cup of coffee sold because Starbucks showed them that you can way overcharge for a cup of coffee and people will still pay it. As a, It should just like be a tax, the Starbucks tax now, having said all that, I'm not going to give up my morning cup of coffee. I will, on most occasions, use the Keurig at home, and that brings it down to like 75 cents per cup of coffee if you put the creamer and you brew your own through the Keurig or if you have the normal coffee pots. But even now, with home brewing systems, like there's espresso, there's Nespresso, there's all kinds of different kits that you can get where you're going to end up paying two and a half, three dollars for a cup of coffee, all part of the Starbucks effect. With all that being said, my personal favorite is the salted caramel mocha. It's a seasonal drink and it absolutely drives Andrea bananas when I order it out of season because the baristas will always say, well, you realize we don't have the salt for that. They put a little sea salt topping on it. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. It's still the same drink to me, but it's an extra conversation that we have to have. And uh, I'm as guilty as the next person. Let me know down in the comments below, what is your go-to Starbucks drink? Is it a holiday drink or is it something that they serve all the time? Or do you refuse to pay the Starbucks tax and contribute to the Starbucks effect at your local restaurant? I hope you guys have a great weekend and we will see you again on Monday. Oh, see you where the
Fire glows. You are ready for a different kind of life.